We choose the 46th aphorism from these. Even as every one governeth himself, so he alloreth unto himself spirits of his nature and condition. One very truly adviseth that no man should carry himself beyond his own calling, lest that he draw unto himself some malignant spirit from the uttermost parts of the earth, by whom either he shall be infatuated and deceived, or brought to final destruction. This precept appeareth most plainly for Midas, when he would convert all things into gold, drew up such a spirit unto himself, which was able to perform this, and being deceived by him, he had been brought to death by famine. If his foolishness had not been corrected by the mercy of God. The same thing happened to a certain woman about Frankford at Odera, in our times, who would scrape together and devour money of anything. Would that men would diligently weigh this precept and not account the histories of Midas and the like for fables, they would be much more diligent in moderating their thoughts and affections. Neither would they be so perpetually vexed with the spirits of the golden mountains of Utopia. Therefore, we ought most diligently to observe that such presumptions should be cast out of the mind by the word while they are new neither let them have any habit in the idle mind that is empty of the divine word aphorism 47 he that is faithfully conversant in his vocation shall have all the spirits constant companions of his desires who will successfully supply him in all things but if he have any knowledge in magic they will not be unwilling to show him, and familiarly to converse with him, and to serve him in those several ministries unto which they are addicted, the good spirits and good things unto salvation, the evil spirits in every evil thing to destruction. Examples are not wanting in the histories of the whole world, and do daily happen in the world. Theodosius, before the victory of Arbogastus, is an example of the good. Brute, before he was slain, was an example of the evil spirits was persecuted of the spirit of Caesar and exposed to punishment that he slew himself who had slain his own father and the father of his country aphorism 48 all magic is a revelation of spirits of that kind of which sort the magic is so that the nine muses are called Hesiod, the ninth magic as he manifestly testifies of himself in theogony in Homer the genius of Ulysses in Pisigiogagi Hermes, the spirit of the more sublime parts of the mind, God revealed himself to Moses in the bush, the three wise men who came to see Christ at Jerusalem, the angel of the Lord was their leader. The angels of the Lord directed Daniel, therefore there is nothing whereof any one may glory, for it is not unto him that willeth, nor unto him that runneth, but to whom God will have mercy, or of some other spiritual fate. From hence springeth all magic, and thither again it will revolve, whether it be good or evil. In this manner, Tagus, the first teacher of the magic of the Romans, gushed out of the earth. Diana of the Ephesians showed her worship, as if it had been sent from heaven. So also Apollo, and all the religion of the heathens is taken from the same spirits. Neither are the opinions of the seducis humane inventions. Aphorism 49. The conclusion, therefore, of this Isagog is the same which we have above already spoken of, that even as there is one God from whence is all good, and one sin to wit disobedience against the will of the commanding God, from whence comes all evil, so that the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom, and the profit of all magic, for obedience to the will of God follow with the fear of God, and after this do follow the presence of God and of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the holy angels, and all good things out of the inexhaustible treasures of God. But unprofitable and damnable magic ariseth from this, where we lose the fear of God out of our hearts, and suffer sin to reign us in. There the prince of this world, the God of this world, beginneth, and setteth up his kingdom instead of holy things. In such he findeth profitable for his kingdom there, even as the spider taketh the fly which falleth into his web, so Satan spreadeth abroad his nets, and taketh men with the snares of covetousness, until he sucketh them, and draweth them to eternal fire. These he cherisheth and advanceth on high, that their fall may be the greater. 
Courteous reader, apply thy eyes and mind to the sacred and profane histories, and to those things which thou seest daily to be done in the world, and thou shalt find all things full of magic, according to a twofold science, good and evil, which that they may be the better discerned. We will put here their division and subdivision for the conclusion of these isagogues, wherein every one may contemplate what is to be followed and which is to be avoided, and how far it is to be labored for by every one to a competent end of life and living. Theosophy, knowledge of the word of God and ruling one's life according to the word of God. Knowledge of the government of God by angels, which the scripture calleth watchmen, and to understand the mystery of angels. Good. Anthrosophy given to man. Knowledge of natural things, wisdom and humane things. Sciences. Cacosophy. Contempt of the word of God and to live after the will of the devil. Ignorance of the government of God by angels. To contemn the custody of the angels and that their companions are of the devil. Idolatry. Atheism. Evil. Cacodemony. The knowledge of poisons in nature and to use them, wisdom in all evil arts to the destruction of mankind, and to use them in contempt of God, and for the loss and destruction of men. Fini.